Okay, uh, welcome back. So I've been planning to put out a video of my most anticipated releases for 2021 this week uh, instead of doing like another NaNoWriMo update, which I feel like would just be boring and repetitive by this point. And so I actually ended up filming a version of this video on Monday that was pretty straightforward. Like I just went through and listed all of the releases that I was excited for and like gave a short synopsis on each of them. And as I was editing it, I realized that it was really boring like even to me I just couldn't get through it and it was so long and so dry that I just deleted all the files and was like no I'm, I'm just not gonna do it but then I came up with this idea and I don't care if it's not fun for anyone else it'll be fun for me because I like to do this kind of thing so that's what this is this is my most anticipated 2021 releases as zodiac signs <laughs> Uh, so the title is pretty self-explanatory, so honestly, I think I'm going to just jump right into it. The first book that I have on my list is Hall of Smoke by Hannah M. Long. So this one is an adult epic fantasy that's like billed as a Viking fantasy. And right off the bat, I'm getting like Ares vibes. Ares is very aggressive and, you know, Ares sounds like the God of War Ares. <laughs> so that's my reasoning for that. It just feels like without knowing anything about this obviously i haven't read any of these books they are not out yet this one just gives me the vibe that it's going to be very gory very bloody and i just associate aries with that for some reason more so than the other fire signs i'm not sure why i feel like the aries i've known haven't been particularly aggressive but who knows this next one is She Who Became the Sun by Shelley Parker Chan. This one's an adult historical fiction novel and it's a little bit more difficult to place, I think because I'm not quite sure what to expect. For some reason I'm thinking like literary vibes. One of the comps is like The Song of Achilles and it's set during China in the 14th century. None of this is very zodiac-y so I'm not entirely sure. But I think I am getting an air sign vibe. I'm getting an air sign vibe. Probably Aquarius, maybe Gemini. What do you do? Uh, I'm a uh, astrophysicist. Okay, I'm uh, a Gemini. I mean, the synopsis says this is about a girl who assumes her brother's identity after he dies. And I feel like that's kind of a Gemini thing. Like, I just can't picture any other zodiac sign readily assuming someone else's identity. I mean, I guess a Libra could. But that premise and the sort of general, like, air sign vibe that I'm getting makes me think Gemini. This is going great. I didn't know I had so many opinions about zodiac signs in books but here we are so this next one is the wolf and the woodsman by ava reed this is another adult fantasy i sort of like split these up by age group and this one is about like a disgraced prince and some girl and they started as enemies but then they go on this like quest through a forest and a city and uh, whatever else to go kill the prince's maybe not kill, to do something about the prince's brother who is trying to seize control of the kingdom. And it's definitely like an enemies to lovers type beat, if you know what I mean. That with the sort of like dark fantasy energy that I'm getting from this, I'm feeling Scorpio. I feel like that has a negative connotation, but I actually really like Scorpios. My mom's a Scorpio, but y'all love your like mysterious aspects. And I feel like Wanting to have sex with someone that you hate and sort of hating someone that you want to have sex with, that's like a very Scorpio thing to me. Can you tell that I know so much about astrology and I really am putting a lot of thought into this? So this next one is actually one I am super excited to talk about and it is The Chosen and the Beautiful by Nevo. I have talked about this author's novella, Empress of Salt and Fortune, before on this channel. I just think it's super underrated and everyone should read it. And I am very much excited for this like great Gatsby reimagining, but it's Jordan Baker's point of view and she's queer and Asian and adopted and like a magician. It just sounds so cool and so unique. Anyway, that was a long tangent about the book. But because I'm seeing like jazz age and like this luxurious vibe, like the cover is very gorgeous and like opulent almost. Um, I, I'm, I'm starting to, le or I'm leaning toward Virgo. Virgos tend to like the material things in life. Um, I associate them with like having their spaces be really pretty, I guess is the word, like very aesthetic. Um, they like to surround themselves with beautiful things and they like to own things, but it's not necessarily out of just like avarice or wanting to possess something. It's that they want to beautify their surroundings and they have very good taste. And for some reason, I feel like this is a lot of like high society 
well, yeah, I mean, it's The Great Gatsby. So High Society and Nouveau Riche and like all this sort of jazz agey opulence and materialism and new wealth. And so, yeah, Virgo. This next one is The Ruthless Lady's Guide to Wizardry by C.M. Wagoner. It's not actually this author's debut, but I read an excerpt from it and it had this like really strong voice to it. It had this really, uh, how can I put it, like wry, witty, just like a humorous approach to... There was a hair on my microphone. Anyway, it is about like a fire witch, I think, who is also a con artist and a thief or just like a career criminal um, who falls in with a group of female bodyguards for this one noblewoman and she falls in love with one of the other bodyguards. So sapphics, love that. This is like stereotypical, but I'm getting like a fire sign vibe just from the voice as well. It's very like energetic. And I'm gonna say Leo for this one. Out of the fire signs, Leos are the most like straightforward. They're just outgoing and want to have a good time. Yeah, that's what, that's the vibe I get from this. Like it just wants to have a good time. This next one is actually a contemporary and I honestly like never read contemporaries. I think I read one contemporary book this whole year. It's just not something that I reach for. Like I have to be in a very specific mood. Um, and I'm usually not in that mood. <laughs> so this one is Honey Girl by Morgan Rogers and it is about two women who get like married on accident while they're drunk in Vegas um, and they're strangers but they move in together and like get to know one another. And for this one I am biased. Um, I'm really excited for this one by the way but I'm super biased and I'm going to say Libra. First of all the cover gives me like Libra artsy bright vibes. Second of all Libras are the best signs and this is like for some reason, despite the fact that I don't read contemporary, it's one of the books I am most hyped for. And from the sounds of the synopsis, it feels like this one isn't just like bright and fun, it has some high emotional stakes, it's got like sadness to it. Everyone expects this to be sort of like shallow and stuff, but we have emotional depth and it's unexpected and honestly like, I don't know, I just feel like it's that unexpected tearjerker sort of vibe that I'm getting from this that makes me go Libra. Uh, if not Libra, definitely the air sign. Maybe Aquarius. Oh, uh, okay. So now we're going into the YA part of this list. I just like got a list on my phone. The first YA title I've got on here is Ace of Spades by Farida Abike Iemide. So this one is a YA thriller and already like thriller is giving me, you know, uh, Scorpio vibes. It's also got an academic setting, which again makes me think Scorpio. I for some reason feel like they're very academically ambitious a lot of the time, or at least from my like experience. This one is about the only two black students at a prestigious school. Prestigious? Prestigious? Prestigious. Prestigious. So it's about the only two black students at a prestigious private school. Why was that so hard for me? And they become the targets of this person who's like spreading rumors, but they're true maybe. Uh, basically like revealing people's secrets at the school. And maybe this person also wants to kill them. Um, it sounds very exciting too and like like it has a lot of meat to it like it has all these discussions of racism and classism and like heavy topics in a thriller which I feel like is really unique and that's what makes me so excited for this one and yeah that's just all like an all-around Scorpio energy that I'm getting so that's my final answer is Scorpio. Uh, this next one is The Valley and the Flood by Rebecca Mahoney. This one is a YA contemporary fantasy. It is out February 23rd. I don't know why I have the date for that one written down. I don't have it for any of the others, but it is about a girl with PTSD who winds up in like a weird desert town. And apparently her arrival is part one of a prophecy that foretells the whole town getting swept away in a flood and destroyed and all that stuff. Already, because I'm feeling like this is exactly up my alley, um, I wanna say Aquarius. Actually, like it's a no brainer. It's, it's quirky, it's weird, it's artsy. That's definitely Aquarius vibes for me. I feel like I keep saying like, so this next one to transition into my next book. Anyway, so this next one is Wings of Ebony by JL. This is a young adult urban fantasy set in Houston. It's about a girl who's half God and she's fighting off these evil forces that are threatening her community. First of all, I wanna say that I am so happy to be seeing more like young adult urban and contemporary fantasies coming back into the scene. I feel like they're now starting to like, trickle back into the fantasy realm which is really great because I was always really bummed out that especially marginalized authors had to miss out on that first sort of like early 2000s wave 
of contemporary and urban fantasy. Second of all, this just gives me Aries vibes, but in a different way from like the Hall of Smoke one. I'm seeing that Aries like heroic streak, but yeah, that's just the vibe I get, like an Aries sort of strong, tough, getting things done sort of vibe. So this one is The Gilded Ones by Namina Forna. This is a young adult fantasy about a girl who discovers that she's like a gold-blooded immortal basically and in her world that's a bad thing to be. People have red blood or gold blood and if you're gold-blooded you're treated as an outcast and also they try to kill you but you can't die so it sucks. She actually ends up enlisting in an army composed of more women like her um, and they all have powers I think? Maybe not? Again coming in with the heavy themes um, and the heavy topics and utilizing them or approaching them through a fantasy lens. Also because it sounds like the main character obviously like goes through a lot of hardship. I want to say Taurus. I feel like I think Tor Tori, Tauruses are just really resilient and they can get through hard times. I'm just getting like earth sign in general. Like I think Capricorn might also be it. Also for some reason just like the gold tones make me think earth sign because metal comes from the ground. Up next is The Ones We're Meant to Find by Joan He. Okay, first of all, I don't know if this is because there's water on the cover and I'm just like an idiot, but I am getting a strong Pisces vibe from this. Pisces is like the sign for me that's hardest to quantify. My dad's a Pisces and I don't get him, so maybe I just don't get Pisces in general. Anyway, this is a young adult sci-fi about a girl who ends up or wakes up on an abandoned island with only one memory and it's that she has a sister and she has to find her. And I, I just feel like Pisces are really... They have this innate sort of sadness to them. These are the sad signs for me, like Aquarius, Cancer, and Pisces. For Pisces, I feel like they accumulate sadness, like bad things just sort of happen to them throughout the course of their life and so they carry the weight of it throughout the rest of their life and it just builds and builds. It's that sort of like tragedy of circumstances kind of thing. And that's the vibe that I'm getting from this, like a girl and her sister who are separated and an abandoned island for some reason that I can't really quantify and I can't really explain because I don't understand astrology enough. The next book is The Forest of Stolen Girls by June Her. First of all, the cover just gives me a cancer vibe. It's like that thing of it being very emotional and like almost mournful just from the expressions on the girls' faces, but guarded with the flowers sort of like concealing them um, and cancers have that. They're soft and fleshy on the underbelly, but they also have that like hard carapace. I'm going too deep with this crab metaphor, but that's what I think of when I think of cancers. And having read June Her's debut, which was also like a chosen dynasty mystery, uh, so historical fiction mystery. For a mystery, I feel like, because mysteries tend to be a little bit more clinical and historical fiction also tends to be quite clinical. It had a really strong emotional core. That overflow of emotions just feels very cancer to me, so I feel like if this one is similar to that, um, as in it's a mystery with a strong emotional core, which it feels like it will be because the main premise is like sisters investigating their missing father and also murders. This next one is another contemporary. I'm really proud of myself that I actually found two contemporaries that I'm interested in this year, next year whatever. It is called Like a Love Song. It's by Gabriela Martins. This one is about a Brazilian pop star who enters a fake dating sort of situation for PR with a British indie film star. I'm also getting like a Gemini vibe from this book. I feel like I've had a lot of Geminis. Maybe I'm just thinking about them. Geminis, for me, like they have two sides to them, obviously. They can be really fun and peppy and sociable, but they tend to be a little bit more like they don't like to form deep emotional connections as readily as you'd like them to. That got really personal, whoa. That just seems like something a celebrity would do, like have a lot of superficial friends but not form deep emotional attachments very easily. So there's that aspect to it. I also feel like a fake dating scheme for PR is just like a Gemini thing to do. Just like the assumed identity thing, it's like being comfortable with living a fake life. I could also see a Libra doing this, so I'm kind of wishy-washy between Gemini and Libra. Maybe I'd say like Gemini Sun, Libra Moon for this one if we're gonna get really deep into it. Okay, this next one has been really hard for me to categorize um, and it is Gear Breakers by Zoe Hannah Makuta. So, um, okay, I think I'm just going to like talk my way through this and try to figure it out while I talk. So this one is sort of like Pacific Rim. It's about mecha pilots and also one of the characters I think dismantles the mechas and it is sapphic. So there's like a combination of like sci-fi robots punching things or whatever else and like a coming of age story is what 
I've seen, like that phrase in particular. So there's strong character dynamics, there's a relationship, a budding romance, um, but also giant robots. Oh god, this is hard. I want to say... Again, I'm doing that like metal association in my head, like a metal earth sign association, but I don't, that doesn't feel right to me. I'm just gonna pick one and then like make up a reason to justify myself, but it won't be a genuine answer. And like, I genuinely want to categorize this. So I'm going to go with cancer because I feel like that gooey emotional core uh, balanced with like more hard sci-fi stuff, not hard, but more sci-fi stuff. I think, I think cancer will be my final answer because Ooh, that rhymed. I think cancer is gonna be my final answer because I can't think of anything else it would be, even though I'm not 100% sold on it being a cancer book. I wonder when it was born. I mean, when it's going, I wonder what the release date is. So the next book I have on my list is Blood Like Magic by Lizelle Sambury. And once again, I am out here just simping for young adult urban fantasy. Right off the bat, like the cover, everything, it's giving me intense Sagittarius vibes. I don't really know how to justify this one. I'm just thinking like a fire sign, but more subdued than the others and the relatives in the fire sign family. This one is about a young witch who has to kill her first love to save her family's magic. That seems like a Sagittarius problem, like a problem they would have. I don't know why necessarily, but it just strikes me as something that would happen to a Sagittarius. I'm going to go ahead and call it a Sagittarius. I actually want- now I'm starting to wonder if like any of these actually line up with the release dates for these books. If I got more than one in this entire video, I would lose my mind. Oh my gosh, I feel like I've been talking for literally 20 years. I'm so... <laughs> my throat is starting to go hoarse. Oh my god, I have a meeting so soon. So I have one last book and it is What Big Teeth by Rose Sabo. This one is a young adult horror, which like lately I have been such a slut for horror. I don't know if it's because I made that like how to write horror video or I'm just writing a horror comedy at the moment. I don't, I don't even, like I've just been so into horror as a genre, as a topic. It just has been occupying my brain. Uh, anyway. This is a young adult horror fantasy and it is comp to like the Addams Family. Basically it's about a girl who's from a monster family and she's the normal one, kind of, allegedly, you know? And she is coming home and trying to reconnect with all these people who are like shapeshifters and I think one is a witch and maybe one is a ghost. That sort of like quirky spookiness, like that offbeat, and it's not just quirky, it's specifically like scary quirky. Um, I associate that with Aquarius a lot. So sad quirky and scary quirky are like the two, two Aquarius types of quirky. Why does that sound like a bad version of the Spice Girls? And yeah, like the cover is really artistic and gorgeous. Honestly, I think this is like my favorite cover out of the batch. It just looks so good to me. Yeah, not a doubt in my mind. That's an Aquarius book. Okay, that was my last book, so I'm done. I'm free to go to my meeting. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm sorry that this was such a stupid way to like deliver this information that these are the books that I'm looking forward to next year. So yeah, I'll see you guys next week, probably with a nano update. Um, I might try to do a vlog because I have time off for Thanksgiving, but we'll see about that. I upload every Thursday slash Friday because I think this is going to be another one that goes up on a Friday, but better late than never. If this sort of content interests you, I talk a lot about writing and books and all that stuff, so go ahead and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next week.